All right, Brad asked on 29, but I'd rather show you 31 because the process is the same, but 31's crazy because this is a parabola that uh, because the y squared is the y is squared, it's going to open right or left depending on whether it's positive or negative. This one's positive, so the parabola opens to the right. And here's your x term. So this one is a little bit different. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to move the 16x and the 25 over. So I'm going to subtract 16x and subtract 25 from both sides of the equation. Whoops. And so, you know, if you had an equal sign, you'd have negative 16x minus 25. So now you've got, and then I'm going to use the symmetry property to flip it across the equal sign. So negative 16x minus 25 equals y squared uh, minus 6y. I might also point out, I guess, that this 25 here, that is your x-intercept in this case. So uh, positive 25 is your x-intercept. Uh, maybe it's negative 25. But yeah, it would be negative 25 if you solve for x. So anyway, negative 25 is your x-intercept. So just so you have that. Well, um, just like normal, you complete the square. We don't have to, um, the quadratic term is 1, so you don't have to take anything out. So we're just going to take that negative 6, divide it by 2, and square it. And uh, so we got negative 16x minus 25 equals y squared minus 6y, and then it would be plus 9. Because 6 divided by 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9. Whatever you add to the right, you must also add to the left. So now we've got negative 16x minus 16 equals, and then if you factor this, it's y minus 3 squared, which was the goal to start with. So negative 16x minus 16 equals y minus 3 squared. So now we just need to solve for x. So I'm going to add 16 to both sides. And so negative 16x equals y minus 3 squared plus 16. And we have to have x or y all by itself. So we're going to go ahead and get x by itself by dividing both things by negative 16 all the way across. And so x equals negative 1 16th, because there's a 1 there. And you can just make that a fraction, pull it out front. y minus 3 squared minus 1. And so your vertex is 3, negative 1. Um, to find p, or your foci, to do that, you take 1 over 4p and set it equal to the quadratic term, which in this case is negative 1 16th. And so uh, 4, excuse me, p negative equals 16 as you cross multiply. So p equals negative 4. So that will help us find the foci. So we're going to go left 3 and down 1. And I'm going by 2's on my graph. Left 3, down 1 would be right there as my vertex. That's also your axis of symmetry. Maybe I'll switch to red here to graph it. Okay, so um, uh, to come up with the focus... Um, you're going to go 4 um, left, so 2, 4 would be right there. That's your focus. Directrix would be just opposite of that. 2, 4 would be right here. Dotted line for the directrix. And to come up with uh, a couple points, to you're going to have to make a table. I don't think I'm going to quite get it finished, but... You might pick uh, 0 or uh, maybe um, 5. 5 might come up with something pretty, pretty regular. And so here's your graph. Once you plug that in, you're going to have something that looks like this, probably a little wider, excuse me, something more like this. And I'm not going to have quite enough time to finish graphing this, but I know all of you can plug that into a table. Excuse me, and you're going to plug it into the y value, not the x value.